My subject tonight is permission to do you. Years ago, I was pastoring a small ministry in Long Island in New York. And I was praying and looking to the Lord to, to really direct my path. I was looking for him to say something to me, give me some directions. And the Lord said to me something that just upended all of my theological perspective. He said to me, what do you want to do? I thought, wait a minute, what do I want to do? Isn't this about me doing your will? Isn't this about me finding out what you want daily, day in, day out, minute in, minute out, moment in, moment out? He said to me, what do you want to do? It caused me to go and study the subject of permission. I even, when I wrote, I started writing about the revelations that God had given me, and I wrote a book, What You Don't Know Can Be Fatal. Revelations that changed my life. In, in this book, I wrote a chapter on permission because I had to take time and study it for a minute. I mean, it, it, just, it just really changed my total perspective. And I, this is a critical element because some of you don't understand why there's an unexplainable failure in your life. You have a dream, you have a vision, but there's unexplainable favor. I mean, unexpl unexplainable failure in your life. And I believe that this is a critical element. The element that is missing is permission. I often tell people, as you learn what God has done to us, I mean, he's raised us up. He seated us together in heavenly places. We now have a new image on the inside. I say to them, and this is usually religious people I have to say this to, Crucify the old man, but do not crucify the new man. What is God doing in our lives today that is amazing to me? I always thought when I was raised up in church, you know, there were certain rules and there were certain structure. I always thought you get in line and you, you make sure you stay in your lane. But I found that God is pouring gasoline on my desires. <laughs> Can you believe that? God Almighty, who I thought was stern, and I thought, you know, you just you just better toe the line with God, otherwise you're going to get zapped. You know, I found him pouring gasoline on my desires, God Almighty. But that's because there's a new man now. It's made after the image of God, and this new man is not to be denied. This new man is in the image of God, and we, we want to grow this new man. But now there's something that you need to know about. Everybody listening to me, there is something called permission. Something called permission. All right, I told you I'm going to read in the, in the NIV because I love the, the way it says it here. In the NIV, Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 14, it reads, Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought other, the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold? See, I have, given I have gained five more. 21st verse. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. 22nd verse. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. 23rd verse. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. 
Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, 26 verse, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew I was a harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers. So then when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Wow. Permission. This is something that slaves, servants always wanted. They always wanted their master's money want to live like their master, and they wanted their master to leave town, stop looking over my shoulder, and, and just, you know, many, many managing me all the time. So this is what the master did. He gave them bags of gold. Wow. His own stuff, he gave it to them. And let's see what you're going to do with it. This is what is implied in our lives today. God Almighty has, has I mean, he has reached into heaven and given us everything up there. He gave his son. He sent back the Holy Spirit. He has given us his word, everything he said. Angels are our ministering spirits. They, they serve us. Promises galore. We also have the love of God. I mean, does that imply anything to you? As I was growing up, I thought... You know, we were learning the rules. We were learning that thou shalt not. We were learning, you know, the structure of things. We were learning that God was, you know, he was, he, he was a judge. And we, you know, we, we were learning obedience. And as we learned this, we got in line. But I did not know that there's also another element in this. Once you learn this, and this is what I, I, I want to say to you tonight. Permission is critical in your life. We need to understand that we not only have teachings of rules and laws, but at a certain point, God turns around and gives you permission. Dreams that God gives us, visions that God gives us on the inside. Ephesians 3.20 says it. It's an exciting verse. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ephesians 3.20, that's what that is. Now, that gives us dreams. That gives us vision on the inside. But you can have a dream and it's on the inside, but you feel no authority to act. You, you, you're in church and, and you're you're a deacon or you're, you're, you're a minister or whatever, but you feel no authority to act. Permission can be defined as an act, a ritual, or an event that grants authority for you to change your behavior. It is an act, a ritual, or an event that grants you authority to change your behavior. Now, there are several things that we know about graduation, Baptism, ordination, weddings, all of these are rituals. All of these are events that give us the authority to change our behavior. Well, let me tell you something. God has given you permission. It's exciting to know that. It's a little scary, too. I will admit it's scary. For when the Lord said to me, what do you want? Oh, my God. <laughs> It was scary to me to find out that he was saying to me, what do you want to do? I'm always looking for him to tell me what to do. Of all the hindrances to vision, of all the hindrances that you will face, when you feel no authority to act, when you, have, when you don't feel like you have permission, that can be a hindrance that can stop all of your activity. When you know you have permission, it propels you in your God-given assignment. I mean, you go for it. You go for it. When you don't feel that you have permission, all of a sudden you are stopped in your tracks. St. John, the first chapter in the 12th verse, King James says, to as many as received him, 
To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Now, there was a time in the Bible when the law was taught. We were under the dispensation called law. It was very strict. It was very certain. It was very structured. And just the same as when you teach your children. When they're young, you say, don't touch the stove. Don't run across the street. Look both ways. Make sure you, you, know, you cover up when you go outside. You, they, they may want to know why, but you can't always explain why because they, they won't fully understand. They just have to obey. The first rule is obey. Obedience is first. But once they learn obedience, then it's time for permission. And the same it was even in the scriptures. First, we learned the law. We learned it. And then God gave us a promotion. We learned the law, and then he moved into the place called grace. Undeserved favor. Have you learned the rules? Have you learned the structure that thou shalt not? Well, look, don't get stuck there. The problem with people in church is that we camp around some things that the Lord said when he really wanted us to grow and to make progress. Permission is a critical element in a believer's life. You can learn rules so much that when permission comes, you can't even hear it. You can learn rules, you can learn laws so much that you feel like you've got to do th certain thing at a certain time. You know, I got to say the Our Father prayer. I got to say it three times. I got to, you know, you can just do it like rote, like routine. But God has turned around and given us something called permission. Permission comes with the dream God gave you. Why? Because it was God that gave it to you. Whatever's born of God, when you got a baby inside you that comes from God, whatever's born of God overcomes the world. I never knew that God would pour gasoline on my dreams. For some reason, church and religion made me think that, you know, you, you keep the rules, and if you keep them real good, you, you go before God, he looks on the record and says, well done because you kept all the rules. I had no idea that there was called something called kingdom, where you are to move in the permission that God has given you and the dream that God's given to you. This is amazing to me because many people have gotten stuck. Many people in church and religion have gotten stuck on rules and laws. And they feel good about the fact, and they try to bring you in so that you will follow the rules and the laws. And then there are times when you get ready to use your permission and they, they shudder at the, at the boldness that you have because you're moving in the permission of God. But I tell you right now, if God gave you a dream, there is permission in that dream. Paul here said, I'm not talking this by command. I'm talking this by permission. Wow. Who ever heard of permission in the Bible? Here it is permission. It's the reason why a dream can die. You will, if you don't move in that permission, you will live a life that is unsatisfactory and unsatisfying until the Lord come and take you home and you, you know, you leave the prison of this normal thing. But God has given to us permission. I'm excited about it. I'm so glad to share this with you tonight. I remember one time listening to the evangelist Jesse Duplantis. He said he was praying to the Lord for direction. And many of you are praying to the Lord for guidance. And I have been praying to the Lord for guidance. Lord, I want you to show me. I want you to tell me. I want you to show me. I want you to tell me. And you're just like Jesse Duplantis. Jesse Duplantis said it was silent. God didn't say anything to him. And he was a little upset with God, which sometimes we can be upset with him. How, how come I've been, I've been praying this prayer now for days and days and days? What, what's going on, Lord? Well, the Lord said to him, Jesse, said, I trust you. You make the decision now, and I'll back you up. <laughs> oh, God. Woo 
You make the decision and I'll back you up. It sounds like what Jesus said when he came and said, all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. People stop right there. They say, God got all the power. Jesus got all the power. But they don't hear the rest of that. It's in Matthew, the 28th chapter, 19th verse. Jesus said, now you go and I will now be with you. What is that doing? He transferred that power into the hands of men. Don't crucify the new man. Crucify the old man. The new man, God is pouring gasoline on your desires. This is why there's that disturbance on the inside of you, because God has given you permission. Oh, God. Wow. Who knew that living for the Lord would be like this? But do not get stuck as, as you're taught like a child, as you're taught the rules, as you're taught the laws, as you're taught the structure. Don't get stuck there. There's a promotion coming. And when that promotion comes, it's time for you to use that mind God has given to you. The scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, when you renew that mind, don't crucify. Don't start humbling yourself down and saying, no, no, it's not me. It's all God. It's all God. I hear you. But you have renewed your mind now to the word of God and you can be trusted. You can be trusted. I often thought that the will of God was the straight and narrow. I thought it was the straight and narrow. But I found out differently as I studied this permission, I found out that the will of God is not just one straight and narrow path. The will of God is an ocean. You sail on the ocean until you hit land. Somebody else described it as green lights until you hit a red light. Green lights, go. What did the Lord say to the disciples? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Boy, I tell you, that ought to set a fire under you. Now, there's some things, because church has one stage, has one platform, and there's only so much time that you can do in the hour and a half, two hours, three hours, whatever time you have in church. But whatever you can't do in church, we're not talking just about church. We're talking about kingdom. Is the world big enough for you? The stage in the church or the pulpit of the church might be a small pulpit. Don't, don't get your feelings hurt. The dream God gave you is for the kingdom. And he's pouring gasoline on it because he wants you to understand you got my, you learned the rules. Where, did you learn obedience? Okay, don't get stuck there. Now it's time to use that mind and the thoughts God gave you. Now that's scary because, you know, we're saying, I, you mean to tell me I'm, I'm going to depend on what I think? Yes, once you renew your mind, once you get cleaned on the inside, once you are forgiven, once you are raised up, God can trust you. Wow, that's amazing to me. Some people, you know, we don't realize that Faith is, is defined as the substance of things hoped for. Let me read you something out of this book. You know, because when I studied it, I, I wrote a chapter here. There's a chapter here on permission in this book. And let me, let me read this to you. This is something that I think is so good. Pay attention, please. Permission appears to be a basic human need without which there is no inward authority to act on what we believe to be true. Although mentioned throughout the Bible, this critical element to success has for the most part remained invisible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Permission lies somewhere between faith and hope. Permission is the trigger, the trigger that turns hope into faith. Without it, believers are like the driver who sits in his car, revving up the engine, but unable or unwilling to take necessary action to engage the wheels to get the automobile in motion. Let me read just a little bit more for you. We now have a little more insight as to why the wicked prosper. Have you wondered why wicked people are so aggressive? I think Branson just went up into space and, and, and the other guy is getting ready to go up there. You know, we wonder why the wicked prosper. I mean, I, I can't say wicked. There, there's some people that are wicked that are prospering and we kind of wonder. But this is the reason. 
They race ahead, taking immediate advantage of the same opportunities offered to believers who are immobilized by the need to check back for permission. Living more recklessly than most of us, the unrighteous give little thought to the consequences of their actions. Because of significantly less inhibitions, they require less permission before stepping out. It's a sad fact that while the wicked are already enjoying the fruits of getting in on a good thing, the righteous are busy getting approval. Oh my God. This is something that really, that really blessed me when I found this out. Permission. I did not know that this was the kind of God I served. I, I didn't know that. I thought that he was stern, he was sitting up in the throne, and I thought that he was just checking my record and making sure, you know, I stay on that straight and narrow. But let me tell you something. The God that we serve has created a universe. Someone said, Earth was not the only planet that God made. As any of you, if you've been to school, you know, there are thousands of planets out there. It's believed that because of the sin of man, we have stopped here on earth. But I understand that the universe is expanding at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. So that, meant, that means ever since the creation, the universe has been expanding. Who is that for? I believe that's for the sons of God. Hallelujah. To as many as received them, as received Jesus, to him gave he the to them gave he the power to become sons of God. We got a universe that we're going to be going into and conquering. The Lord has planned it. He has poured gasoline on your desires. Don't be limited. Yeah, I know, you know, some people may look at you and, and, and kind of wonder what's wrong with you. How come you, you, you doing these things? But that's because you have permission from God Almighty. There is permission given to you. Now, if the world is expanding I mean, the, the universe is expanding at 186,000 miles per second. That means there are many other planets out there, many other solar systems. As God teaches us, this is exciting because he's giving us eternal life. We will forever be with him. Yes, we will. We'll forever be with the Lord. And what are we going to be doing? Are we just going to be sitting around playing harps? up there in heaven? No, I believe we're going to be going forth into the planets, into the, the solar systems, doing things we've never done before. This is an exciting concept to me. Now, the sooner that you understand that you have permission, the sooner you'll move out. And I'm telling you right now that you have permission that is from the Lord. Nothing is to be impossible unto you ever again. You are those that are the sons and the daughters of God Almighty. I found out that he didn't just want me to be a church member, but I'm here learning to become like God. He made us in his image. He made us in his likeness. And now these teachings, I hope you get these teachings. Now, I also, I've got some more for you. Praise God. The next time we get together, I'm going to talk to you also. I heard somebody make a statement and they made a statement. I think it was Kenneth Hagin. He said, power is always present all the time. And he gave some steps for how we can use that power. Now, I'm not going to talk about that now, but the next time we get together, I'm going to talk to you about that. Oh my God, because this is something that God has given into your hands. I hope you got something out of this word today. Permission to do you. Did you hear a word from the Lord? If you heard a word from the Lord today, 
I hope you'll sow a seed. I tell you, World Overcomers is moving forward. We have purchased some land, 25 acres. We're about to build a complex that's going to bless the community. We're about to build something that's going to glorify God. We're about to do something. Amen. So if these words are blessing you, help us to help us to keep sending it around the world. Sow your seed today. I love sowing my seed because there's the promise of the harvest. Like the farmer, sow your seed and there is the promise of harvest. Sow your seed. You can do that. You can text WOE online, W-O online to 77977 to sow your seed today. Uh, I trust that you were blessed by this word. I want to pray for you one more time. Father, right now, bless your people. Let, let the hearers hear this concept of permission and set out. Let them hear this, con this, this concept of permission and loose themselves from their chains. Let them hear it and be blessed by it. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. And all those that are giving now in this offering, sowing their seed, you told them there's a hundredfold return. You told them that men would give to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we believe you now. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Wow, I finished early this time. I got about 38 seconds for 30 minutes. But I thank God for you being with us today. And until the next time we are together, blessings and favor in your life in Jesus' name.